welcome to the Camogie Report podcast brought to you by Tipperary Camogie TV, Tipperary Camogie's very own YouTube channel. I'm Jarlene Canan. I'm delighted to be joined. My, my special guest this week is Shannon Rover, Sabrina Larkin. Sabrina, very welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me on. Um, I suppose we'll begin just chatting about um, Shover. Uh, you've had two wins in a row in this year's F- uh, Insurance Media Championship at win for one two goals and 10 points to a goal and seven and then in the first round week four uh you bet care big score two 15 to nine points um i suppose reaching the final last year um many people would probably have you tipped as favorites for this year um does that bring added pressure or does that motivate you or yeah i suppose last year was a funny year for everybody um we got into the final all right but sure turl us absolutely played us off the field that day you know so we kind of knew going in that it was going to be a big battle so I think I think this year we we kind of you don't want to get your aspirations too high because you know you're never guaranteed of getting anywhere past past the next game you play like but the two games we've played so far they've been positive enough um we started out with care and she's like you know when you're starting off a championship you don't really know where you're at because we'd have quite a few county players in and like we didn't have our full team out at any stage before that care game. So we were happy enough after the first round. Um, Killer one then the weekend, like, you know, that's that's very much a local derby here for us. Like, you know, we'd all go to school together in the same school in Burst Cane and that for the majority of the players. So it's always, it's always a nice bit of about edge to that game. But um, yeah, look, that could have went either way. They, they had a goal chance near the end as well. And it could very easily have put us under big pressure. So um with pressure for for a final we're not even going that far to be honest um like you i was chatting to you before and and like that intermediate or that intermediate championship is is wicked tough so to to think past personally now we'd be we'd be silly people you know yeah just talking about that um i really feel it's really competitive championship this year um and just looking like i know there's no games this weekend but the following weekend uh year at home to borough city Naka Villa, um, or at home against Care, Killer One, uh, or playing Newport. Like even those three matches alone, it's very hard to call. Um, do you feel it's more competitive this year than than other years? Or yeah, it probably has. Like you know, like ourselves in Lockerbie Villa would have had um, right battles when we were in Junior A, and intermediate and Junior A always seem to be hard ones to get up at or to get out of even um, to move on a grade. So. Like this year seems super competitive, like Newport winning the league, our game has been so close so far, like, you know, Naka Villa have two wins from two as well, so it, it is really hard to call. I think that Newport Killer One game, it'll be really, really interesting um, to see where who comes out um, on top of that one. The pressure, I suppose, is on Killer One, but like Newport, Newport are no slouches, like they're, they're a really good side and they're league champion or league winners for a reason, so... Um, yeah, look, look, we're looking to Bursa Lee and, you know, they'll have Nick and they'll have Julianne back into that fold. So they'll, um, they'll be different, different than what we had in the league. Get out of, um, you see Turles get out last year and they're doing quite well. So, you know, it's, it's intermediate and junior seem to be really hard things to, to win, um, and to move on from, but, that's that's the good thing about it like nobody wants to be playing a championship that's that's a breeze you know so they make interesting games I suppose looking back to last year's final obviously you were without your captain Eve Malachny was injured Um, you know she's back this year and I see um, I think she got the score and um, going for you against Kilowan at the weekend with a pint and then Anya Cleary got a goal so it must be great to have Aoife back uh, in the team again Ah, yeah, Sharifa has retired now four or five times, Jerry. You know yourself. <laughs> but uh, no, no, it's brilliant to have her back. I'd be good friends with Aoife. Um, and, you know, she did get a nasty injury last year against Bursley. Um, we were just saying there, like, the first game she'd fully played was that care game. And she was like a, she's like a little eight year old, got out into a goal game, blitz, like, you know, a big smile on her face. So it's great to have her back. Like, she's, she's a huge experience in the team as well. And, I suppose other years we would have probably struggled for leadership in the forwards and kind of just Aoife, but there's there's lots more girls there now that kind of are tagging along by Aoife's example and stuff. So she's massive to have back in the group, yeah, um, even from free-taking and everything. 
Um, but yeah, it, it's brilliant to have her back and she's after working really, really hard to get back into a position to, to hurl at the level that she's hurling at the minute. So it's great. Very good. And just, I'll just look back on the matches at the weekend gone. Uh, so Newport and Ballina Hinch, uh, one ten, Nakavilla three ten. So great win for Nakavilla there again. It's their second win in a row, just coming up from junior. Um, it was that was a close game. There was nothing really in it for a long stage. And then I suppose the decisive period of the match was when um, Emer Heffernan scored a goal, and then um, Rena Friday followed up with a point, and then um, Kickham's got in for another goal from Ellen Brown, and I suppose that left the halftime score one five to three five. Um, Nakavilla continued their good vein of form then a couple of more scores after half time from Rena Friday and Cueva McCarthy but um, you know Newport never gave up they had Keely Lennon on the scoreboard Saoirse McGrath uh, Shauna Curtin and um, the score finished up 1-10 to 3-10 so Nakavilla goal is key there then in the other intermediate game last weekend Burris Lee uh, a very narrow win over Care, 13 points to 2-6 um, Burris Lee Pierrot is a very good report up on their Facebook and um, just reading it there, uh, Keir won a penalty and Orla McNary came out of the goals, came up and scored it. Um, Boris Lee also had a positional switch there, moved Julianne uh, to midfield during the game. Katie Fitzgerald went back to centre-back and I suppose that's up more, more scores for Boris. Um, we see Nicole Walsh had seven points, six from freeze. Danny Rang got a point, Katie Fitzgerald. Tara Mokler, Aideen Hogan, Noreen Stapleton, all getting on the scoreboard. So a big spread of scores for Burns Lee there. And then, like we mentioned already, the Killer One and Shannon Rovers game. So really exciting championship break this weekend. But then the following weekend, just to repeat there, Shannon Rovers against Boris, Nakavilla and Care and Killer One and Newport. Um, so we touched on it there, you know, yourself and Aoife would have played county down through the years. On your Slattery, obviously, all-star goalie last year. Um, I suppose Shannon Rovers have always been producing some some good inter-county players. Um, at present, then, you ha- who would you have on your intermediate team at present that would have played, um, do you know, juvenile with Tipperary this year? Or underage? Um, yeah, like this year, this year we're kind of blessed in the sense that we've had a lot of girls, we've had good 16s minor teams in the last couple of years and, and they've stepped up now to our adult team, which is great. Like, but um, say like the two Lanans, Laura, Laura and Anya Lanan are there. Um, Laura was in with the minors this year. And you know, Celine Guinan is there with the 16s and that um Neve Franks as well. So like they're all young girls. I was actually laughing in the care game, I was looking out the field going, Oh Jesus Christ, like these these young girls are coming in behind and, and they're all going to blaze. And um it's great. Like the club have had an awful lot of, of girls coming in along through the county underage, and it really does stand to the club then in the long term, you know. So them girls are our mainstays. They're now really on our intermediate team and they're still only six, 17 years of age or that, you know. So um, it's great to have them. Like Anya's obviously a great leader then in the goals and and, and her cookouts are obviously massive for us. But, um, you know, there, we've girls there for, on 14s and 16s and 15 squads that were playing the last couple of weekends for development days as well. So, look, it's great. Like, it, they're all coming, chomping at our heels, obviously, to, to push us out of positions now as we're getting that bit older, Ger, but um, mm. look, we'll, we'll, um, we'll take them all because they're, they're really balancing out our team this year. Do you know the experience they're bringing from having been involved in development squads or, say, the minors and that for tip this year as well, so. Very good. And um, I suppose I always think it's a, you know, it's a good sign of a club that they're going well and going from strength to strength when they can field two adult teams. So, uh, Shannon Rovers have a second team in the junior B2 grade. Um, I know they lost to Anna Carty at the weekend, won 13 to 4 1, uh, and they're playing Silvermines this Sunday. So, would that be kind of a, a younger team again, or is that sort of some of the golden oldies that make up that team? Or... Do you know what? That, that's kind of more a product of COVID, to be honest, because last year, I'd say a lot of clubs are the same. An awful lot of girls didn't go away traveling or didn't, didn't go away on holidays or whatever. And we ended up with 33 or 34 last year. Um, and it's obviously, you know yourself, it's very hard to balance that with one team. So um, Tess Burke is, is, is a bit of a legend down in our club and she's always been looking for a junior team to set up. So this year was probably the first year we had the real numbers to do it. Um, it's kind of a mixture, Ger. We have some of the girls who are probably just coming up to adult level and it's given them lots of game time and stuff. Um, they, they did really well in the league, like, and it's after giving them a lot of confidence to, to push everybody, you know, so it's kind of a mixture. There, there's young ones and there's there's a few of, the, few of the mainstays then that are given the experience to the group, you know. Um, 
would, yeah, it's great to have them numbers, you know. And would you all train together or would that team train separately? Or? Yeah, no, we're all training together. Um, you know, I remember a couple of years ago, we might have seven or eight come and train. And so like, you know, last week we were able to play a game against each other. And, you know, it's that's really good. So we're all training together. Um, our management are good in the sense that they want to protect the two teams, especially the junior team. Um, so, you know, they're they're clever when they're going out to their first round games, second round games that, you know, that junior team has been protected too because they only started there last weekend. So, um, yeah, hopefully we can keep the two teams on the road and uh, even into next year or whatever, the year after, because the numbers seem to be the favour anyway, this going so far anyway. Brilliant. That's great. And I suppose one positive out of COVID, as you mentioned. And who is who's managing you this year? Is the same management or new management or...? Uh, no, we have new management in this year. So Tess, Tess Burke is involved. Um, so the the junior team is her little her little baby. But um, yeah, so we've Pat Melotney as well. That's that's Aoife's dad there. So he'd have a wealth of experience. He would have been with us years and years ago as well. Um, like you know, over the last ten years, kind of in and out. And then Paul Darcy, then um, he's a teacher below in in Burr Community School. So um, he's living in Burskane. So he's in with us as well, kind of doing a lot of hurling. Um, and there was a there was a one of the hurlers from the Rovers was involved, but he's gone traveling now. So it's just a tree even there at the minute, but they're they're doing great work for us. They're very positive, you know, and um to keep two teams going and two groups of people going is is a credit to them so far anyway, you know. Very good. And we look forward to keeping following Shannon Rovers throughout the intermediate championship and uh keep an eye on the results and, and, and the knockout stages. Um would you would you pay attention to um say the senior championship or would you follow the junior championship or you know I suppose it's a very exciting championship this year FBD insurance coming on as sponsor as well it's just added to I suppose to the the, the occasion and there seems to be great interest would you follow any of the other uh, grades or yeah sure you'd always have girls that you've played with or or, or friends of yours playing um so following the probably the junior A and the senior championship probably a bit more closely if I've been honest um do you know so just have friends playing and stuff but um yeah, the whole we we're just chatting about before we came on, like the FBD thing has been brilliant because all the results are are there to, at hand now. You don't have to go searching for them, and and everybody seems to be sharing them. And you know, every time you go on Twitter, they're they're flying up your screen. So, um, yeah, I think the senior championship is interesting. There's been a couple of uh, there's been a couple of unexpected results to start off in t- one and two, but. Um, yeah, look, it's a good way to be because nobody wants nobody wants just a very predictable championship in in any grade really. So it looks exciting anyway. I think the I think the Anna Carty game this weekend it'll be a good one. Um, looking forward to kind of seeing the result of that one. Yeah, definitely. I agree with you there. I think Anna Carty suppose a bit of momentum again now after beating Tumivara. So you know, just thinking about there before and Cloney really got a very tough. First three games, Drum, Turtles, Arsids, and now Anacarty. So, no time for a breather there at all. And um, we mentioned Turtles earlier on, but are you surprised how well they're doing? I suppose beating Anacarty in the first round, and I suppose you know they were neck and neck with Clonty for a long time. Um, at the weekend, final score there was Clonty, uh, one twelve, Turtles, Arsids, one nine. So, a three point win for Clonty, but only a pint in it going into the final quarter. And I suppose Clonty got a few scores, and Turtles then at the start kind of looking for goals and dropping balls in short and. And the Clonty defence and fairness held held strong. So were you surprised that Turles beat Shana Carty and ran Clonty closer? Yeah, do you know what? I, I wasn't really, to be honest. Um, like we played them last year and they were just super organised. <laughs> like we didn't know we were our heads were spinning because we didn't know where they were going and, and they they're very they're very used to each other and they're very connected as a group. So, you know, they were fighting hard at intermediate there for a long time. So no, to be honest, I wasn't surprised um, that they that they got over that they got over Anna Carty. Um, like you look at Clonaldi and and the names they have on the page is is unbelievable. Like you know, so um, to come away just having lost by three points is is a great result. Well, you know, a good enough result considering who Clonaldi have on their team sheet. But um, yeah, look, they're they're doing well, and I think that there there's a core group of girls there. There's no one that has is is overly aged and they're probably going to be around at senior level for for a good few years ahead like you know because they do have a relatively young young outfit you know so just going through the result there Clonty and Torres Arsenal just running with its interest the scores Cora Hennessy had two points from play from midfield 
Caught to Van finished with a goal and seven points and the goal from a penalty, uh, which was actually saved by Kate McCormick. And then it was retaken. Um, the ref had warned the girls that not to supposedly break the line before the penalty. And he said they did. So it was retaken and she made sure of it the second time. Um, and she also finished up with five frees and two points from play. Avra Kirk had a point. Casey Hennessy had a point. Kayleigh Darwin had a point. For Tarda Sarsfield then, uh, Karen Kendi was midfield. She scored a point. Aoife Dwyer a point. Uh, Andrea Lachnan had a great game, one three, a super goal, and uh, really buried it. Give uh, Shreya's White and the goals no chance, and then she had a, uh, two points from play, one from a free. And uh, Nicola Lachnan had three points from play, and Sarah McEvitt a point from play. Um, the other game then I suppose mentioned there Anna Carty, the big, uh, big score, two goals and eighteen points, fantastic scoring. Um, against Tumi Var three three. Um, I suppose we wish Paula Ryan and Joanna Farr from Tomb the best best wishes. I know Paula got stretched off with an ankle injury. And then Joanna Farr, who I believe had a great game at full back, she's a young player. She actually played the final 15 minutes with a broken thumb um, after getting an x-ray there after it. So, so Tumi Vara then, you know, I suppose, and Carter just showed her experience. Jean Kelly, Eilish McDonald were very good. Um, Karen Fox, back from injury, slotted in there, centre-back as well. So that was a good win for Anna Carty. Um, and then I suppose Cashel and Burge Duhar, big, big win for, for Cashel, 2-12 to 1-6. Um, this is the result that surprised me. I thought Cashel might sneak it, but I, I didn't think um, they'd have double scores over Burgess Duhara. Um, I know they had Saoirse Ryan back in full back. She was injured last year. Cream Blair um, was excellent, scored a good few points. Um, for Burgess Duhara, Kieran McHugh uh, scored a second half goal. Um, you know, they still have plenty of very strong players playing like Keir de Maher, uh, Quiva Maher, uh, Gemma Grace, Jenny Grace, um, Ashton Kremen was full back. But um, yeah, Bird Cashel beating Birds to Harrod. What did you think of that result or did you hear much about it since? Or? Yeah, do you know what? It probably was, it probably was a shock to a lot of people. Um, but like if you look back on Cashel, like they've had unbelievable 16 teams there. Like I remember coaching 16s at home and playing them and they were ferocious. Like, and all them girls are all coming coming of age there now. So um Dara will be disappointed with that. Like, you know, a few girls will be chatting to like they are disappointed. But I think you know what it was? I, I think I think they probably just haven't got their momentum going yet. You know, like you said, there they do have they do have a lot of good players there. Um, you know, and they probably have reshuffled a few and trying to find the best team that they have now, you know. So they mightn't be flushed with massive numbers, but I think, you know, they will they will bounce back now. I think they have the minds, I think if I'm right at the weekend, um, you know, and, and the minds are a good win. So like that's that'll be a good game. There probably is a bit of pressure on Duhara to perform in that game. Um, considering the minds betting Nina at the weekend. So um I don't think it'll phase in too much, they'll be disappointed, but I'd say they'll move on pretty quickly and uh and focus on the minds. Yeah, I just think it's going to be a really tasty fixture game because I suppose, like you mentioned, momentum. The minds are going to go into this with really good momentum. And they were very good in the league. I know they bet Drummond Inch in the league. Uh, lost the league final to Um, I know you can't read really too much in the league. Teams went out different days without county players and so on. But still, still reminds, you know, they good. Like you mentioned, momentum again, the word built up in the league. And then um, I suppose a local der- derby against Nina. The conditions were brutal as well on Saturday evening. There was... The rain poured down, but um, another high scoring game, 218 to 214 is is fantastic scoring, I think. And um, I know Nina had a late goal there by Grace O'Brien. So Silver Mines were that bit better than Nina, and um, they'll be delighted uh, with that win. And, um, you know, I think they had a good, great spread of scores. Bree Quinn had five points from freeze, Nicola Butler a pint, and Sarah Conneen, Ellen Conneen, and Neil Canine all getting on the scoreboard. So super scoring there from Silver Mines. And um, you know, they march on now and um they'll be full of confidence, I think, going into the weekend. So just looking at those games at the weekend, Anna Carty and Clonty Rossmore uh, at 4 p.m. That's Anna Carty at home. Drum and Inch then had a bye at the weekend gone. So now they face Tumi Vara at 4 p.m. and that's in the rag. And then Silver Mines and Birds to Hara at 4 p.m. in Silver Mines in Dallas. So they're all on Saturday. So Loads of games to look forward to there. Um, I suppose we'll move on. Um, Sabrina um, or Beanie, I suppose, is your more better known as. I don't know if anyone calls you Sabrina, do they? Only when I'm in trouble. No, My I mother, say, when she's given out to me. Your yeah. mother. So, yeah, I suppose everyone knowing you in the Kogi world as Beanie anyway. Um, I suppose just 
just so for anyone that's not aware of um like your 15 years really playing tip camogie with you know between senior and intermediate i suppose a lot of times with the same management over both teams or you know, might have been on one panel or another panel and it was overlapping and you know he spent a good few years playing senior camogie with tip and 15 years is a long time and this year then uh he, in the relegation final tip intermediate lost out to carlo and i know afterwards in the dress room you you, you uh, suppose spoke to all the teammates and management and told them that you were retiring from uh, intercounty camogie and um, you know, there's plenty of people, I suppose, that have changed their mind, they've announced they're retired and, and aren't and have come back. And I'm just wondering, you know, you've had time to reflect on that decision now, where are you still happy with your decision or, or, or could you be coaxed to come back? Or uh, yeah, I think Jenny, I think Jenny Grace actually retired me, uh, Ger. <laughs> I know, no, um, no, look, I, I did, yeah, I spoke to the team afterwards, um, after that Carlo game, which is obviously a disappointing day, but. Um, I was just thinking earlier on before coming on, like I, I would absolutely love to live in the land of Tiernan Og and and stay going forever because nobody likes to retire when they're enjoying enjoying what they're doing. But um, there's there's a natural order to things as well. So I think I think when I got to the 15 years, I was like, right, it's time to, to call it a day. And um, I'm 35 now at the end of the end of this year. So I think uh, I think it's for new pastures now. But um, that's not to be said that in January I'll be there kicking down the door trying to get out to, to do a bit of hurling somewhere, you know, but um, it'll obviously be hard and, and, you know, it's a big change after spending that long doing it, but, um, you know, there's there's new pastures to, to go to and things like that, so um, I think it's time to be handing over the mantle to, to the girls that are coming chomping behind, you know. And I, like I said, playing since 2006 and in, the, in those 15 years, you um, you won one senior monster final in 2010 and an intermediate monster final in 2021, just gone, a uh, division two league in 2019 and a Soren star award in 2019. So basically an all star for, for the intermediate grade. Um, you know, I always think of 2019, uh, you were captain of Tipperary Intermediates. You're really on a roll that year, won the division two league. I remember you bet Westmead in the semi final, Kenny in the final, I think it was in Banagher. You know, fantastic performance and, and I suppose everyone really believed that you know we could get back to Crow Park with a Tipperary team and um, unfortunately fell short in the, sem in the semi-final but I suppose 2020 a lot of people thought it was going to be your year Um, you know a lot of positives going into 2020 and then obviously the whole Covid disaster um, and you know probably thought Camogie was gone next thing it was inter-county was allowed and next thing second teams were in Ellsworth to play so Tipperary seniors could play but to bury intermediates couldn't because that was our second team so the intermediate championship obviously was just all counties first teams like that must have been absolutely devastation for the likes of you i suppose who knew that their last few years of camogie you know was left you know do you know what i'm saying like you know it was devastating for everyone but i remember thinking of the likes of you and maybe other players who who I suppose didn't have as many years left in them yeah yeah, it was. And like you touched on it there to start, like 2019 was such an unbelievable year. And like, OK, it didn't finish in, in Crow Park the way we wanted it to, you know, but to get there. But um, like 18, 19, there were there were heartbreak years in different ways in, in losing semifinals and that. But yeah, when when that COVID thing happened, like there's, there was one side of yeah, going, OK, this is an actual global pandemic here. We need to catch ourselves on and there, there, you know, there's bigger things going on. But the other side, the, the sports side of yeah, was absolutely gutted, of course. Um, I remember coming back to the house that night where we were kind of being told that we weren't going to be playing and just just pure confusion, like, and kind of scratching your head going, what, what do we do on Thursday or what do we do with Thursday night or are we going training or are we not going training? And then, um, yeah, our last session was over in Temple Tui and we were flying and we were really looking forward to the championship, you know. Um, and, you know, we were kind of... We were kind of just getting to a point where we knew, okay, our league hadn't gone great, but the year before it had gone nearly too good, and we were trying to peak then for for a summer championship. So, look, it wasn't to be. It, it was unbelievably disappointing. Like at the time, you just kind of have to get on with it. But looking back, you're kind of there going, "Geez, that that was a really hard time." Like you know, from a camogie point of view, um, obviously it was a hard time for for lots of people in in, in other more serious ways. Like you know, but um, yeah, like if you, I, I've kind of been thinking about over the past year how it has actually impacted on second teams, you know. So 
you look at the league or the championship this year, the outside of Kilkenny, I suppose, getting to the final, but a lot of them second teams have struggled in a lot of their games, you know, against them um, first team counties, you know, like Salish and Kerry and them, um, you know, because, you know, they, they missed out on a whole year of being together and training together and being a team together. So um, I did, I do think it impacted everybody, um, not just Tipperary, but obviously it was, it was heartbreaking. Um, especially when you're coming to the latter end and their match counts, you know. Yeah, that's a good, interesting point, of, uh, you know, about impacting on the teams then for the following year. So I suppose the start of this year, um, it was announced, I suppose, different management, you know, and like Bill Milani and his management team had managed both senior and intermediates uh, going back the last few years, but this year was going to be two separate managements. So a new management came in. Um, for me, there's pros and cons to that. How, how did you feel about separate management? And then obviously it had an effect, you know, you had a group there and a the management there. Now it was kind of like a new management. And also that group was kind of changed as well because, you know, the senior management obviously extended their panel um, and some players moved up from intermediate to senior. So it was kind of nearly a new team and a new management. What were your thoughts at the start of the year considering, I suppose, Obviously, you were hoping to do really well this year again. Yeah, so like like Keen would have would have chatted to everybody when he was getting his group together, and you know he was highly organised when he was ringing people around, and he he knew what he wanted to achieve in that um, with the group of people that he was calling in. Um, like yourself, there, there's definitely pros and cons to it. Like you know, we were all very familiar with Bill and his management setup, and that, and you know, familiarity is comfortable at times. Like you know, so. Um, like you said, then some girls obviously stayed in the senior panel and then they were kind of trying to create a new team, more or less, bar maybe six or seven of us um, had intermediate. But like I suppose the pros of it is that th that management team can solely focus on a group of 26 or 36 or whatever number of girls you have in each panel. Um, and that, you know, everybody then feel that they they can have a word or they can have a chat and you know this the focus isn't split because that's a hard thing to do it's very hard to manage two groups of people and they're out alternate weekends and you're trying to play a different game style and maybe two different teams so that's a pro in the sense that there was one management to one team um and then a con like i suppose like you know yourself like kind of that then is that you, you do have that kind of conversation of who who's going up and who's coming down and you know a lot of that to and fro and can kind of sometimes get in on people and there's a bit of confusion or lack of clarity or whatever but um look it was what it was and and I think from a training point of view it, it did us absolutely no harm and it was it was nice to have a group of of 25 26 30 whatever it was um a train together rather than this massive group of 60 at times, you know, because that's hard to manage in the best of times. And then I suppose the year then started off as really a roller coaster of a year, you know. Um, I suppose the league didn't go to plan, ended up in a relegation battle there, but won that relegation final. Um, then there was the high of the Munster final, um, really, really good performance, beating Cork. Any day it'd be Cork, you know, it was brilliant, but beating them in a Munster final was just fantastic. Um, the great celebrations that day in the rag. Um, but then I suppose the championship never got going and like that ended up getting relegated. And so what were you know, what were your thoughts, I suppose, this year and, and you know, where did you feel maybe it went wrong or just were you not good enough or did you know, or was it the whole I don't know, didn't have time, I suppose, with COVID, like you mentioned, not getting a chance to play last year with the COVID and the new management not really getting the time. I mean, there was COVID, still COVID restrictions the start of this year. So a new management, I thought, had very little time to get a group together, to get training, and next thing the league was starting. Yeah, I suppose, yeah, like it was, it, it was like the, the year did not go to plan at all. Like, and, and if you talk to any of the girls on that panel, like they were really, really disappointed with how it turned out. Um, you know yourself with a league like after a league and kind of you can kind of take a step back and reset and, and take some learnings out of it and you know you might be playing around with positions and things like that or tactics or whatever so sometimes people don't pay much attention to the league but you know when we won that monster championship like you were there you were there the day like it was great and and the team played unbelievably like it was it was like a different side that had played the week before or two weeks before that so 
Um, we had kind of high hopes then going into the championship and, you know, in our group then we carry, carry Derry and Leash and like we'd already played Kerry and Derry in the league. So we kind of felt like we had learned something about them. But um, to be honest, like you asked, you asked what probably went wrong. Like that first day out against Kerry, I think was a massive loss to us. Um, you know, you know the way there's a game that you can kind of earmark as a really must win game, one that's going to, Set the, the set the wheels in motion, and I think that Kerry game was probably it. And we just we just kind of couldn't really hang in there. Um, we had opportunities in it, but we just we kind of couldn't finish them off. I think, and I think that kind of continued throughout the year. So if I was kind of put down to one thing, I'd nearly say like we kind of had chances, and we just didn't. You know, obviously both ends of the field, but we had chances, and we just kind of we didn't really click together is how it felt, you know, that there was kind of a, a new group kind of trying to get to know each other really, really quickly because time was short and time was of the essence. And I think if that group were to be together for another year or two, it'd be a completely different, different situation. Um, Cause it, like, you know, there was an awful lot of girls in there that was the first time I ever played with them. Um, and likewise, and I think if that group was to stay there for a year or two, that, that they would really click because you saw it in the Munster final in a moment. Um, and I think the championship didn't just go the way we wanted, but, uh, you know, I, I think the potential is there for that group of girls. Did you play underage with Tip Up Along? Um, no, so I didn't I didn't um, actually start playing with Tip until at adult level. So I, I started with Shannon Rovers when I was 17. Um, my sister dragged me out to the dragged me out to the club to get me out under my mother's feet, I think. But I was playing hurling underage with boys, but I never played any um, say development squad teams or anything like that coming up. I think I went to one minor trial when I was seventeen um, over in the rag, absolutely bricking it going over, and uh, then didn't didn't come back into the fold then until I started college in twenty sixteen. Or sorry, twenty I don't know what year it was, and uh, Ombres Lan. At that time, you got a letter, which was great. You got a letter to ask you into the squad. Um, so it was the only post I was getting at that age. But um, yeah, I joined the squad then. And um, first year of college, I like, can sure you're playing Ashburn then. Like, and, you know, that that gives you a bit of confidence when you're playing playing Ashburn in college as well to, to kind of bring into a county squad. So that kind of set so me up you, okay. So do you, you were... Your first time playing Tip Camogie is when you're called into the senior panel, 2006, that would have been. You're added on 10 years yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, 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 2006, yeah. Um, wow, yeah, that's... so Umberzan, Umberzan was with the with the seniors that year. Was it Umberzan? I think it was. Uh, or sorry, Tony Delaney. Um, no, because Owen, Owen was there when we won a Monster Final in 2010. Yeah. No, sorry, Tony Delaney was there, I think, 26, 2006. But um, yeah, first year of college. Um, so we had obviously Ashburn in February or whatever, and I think it was after. It might have been after the Ashburn then. Um, yeah, so Very good. That's impressive. Definitely. Yeah, that's impressive though. Fair play. And then, like, I remember I have memories of you playing in the backs. I remember memories of you playing in the forwards. And I also was there a year or two where you played in goals for a Tipperary senior Camogie team. Yeah, I think that was a bit of an experiment. Um, Brian Boyle was Brian Boyle was the manager at the time, and um, I remember meeting him one day, and he was asking me had I ever played in goals, and and I was kind of like, no, I I had never. It's the one position I probably had never played in, but um, yeah. So he asked me would I give it a go, and I suppose it was just purely because of the distance of my striking or or whatever it was, but um, I liked it. You know, it it, it was a challenge, like to be fair, but um, yeah, I I liked the challenge of it, and. The, the communication of it and all that like you know so um now it's not one i'll be repeating but you know it was yeah. it was a challenge all the same yeah yeah and um so what what would be your favorite position to play or where are you playing with shannon rovers this year presumably back in the back uh full back uh, yeah full back um yeah no i actually really like full back either either there or center back um you know i've Kind of played played in the forwards and that obviously you know yourself the freedom of that is great but um I kind of like the the style of of centre back full back the best very good and um I suppose looking back you know thinking back on your inter county career um I suppose you were lucky in a way that it was, there was a lot of barren years I suppose with Tip and um 
you know, it probably was hard to come back year after year. And um, would, would you have any major regrets or do you do regrets or? <laughs> um, Jesus, I don't think, I don't think of any major ones. Um, like them first, them first five, five or six years in the tip, the, the kind of management was changing um, every couple of years. And, you know, you would have been playing to start there as well. And like that, that was kind of hard because you were kind of, you couldn't really get yourself going, you know what I mean? And you didn't really know what the management was looking for. And then there was a new management in. So, um, yeah, probably the only personal regret I'd really have is that, you know, I probably would have liked to have held my fitness a bit better as I, as I got that bit older, you know, and, and I'd be looking back on that now kind of going, geez, I could have, I could have pushed on a bit further or whatever, you know, had I, had I kept on top of that, but you know, I think everybody at my age has that thought and crosses their mind. But um, yeah, no, I'm no major ones to be honest. Um, if if I had, then I kind of you know I'd be looking back with resentment or anything. But I don't. I, I enjoyed everything. It might have been barren, and I might have had hard years where Tip weren't successful or that. But um, like they were all enjoyable, really, when you look back on them. You know, the people you met or the games you got to play or whatever. You know. I suppose that's my next question. Well, what what would be the what were the highlights for you, or what are the best memories you have playing with Tipperary for fifteen years? Um, God, I suppose it's hard to beat it's hard to beat that win in in twenty nineteen. Um, I suppose like sure you were saying earlier, you know that monster final this year, or you know when you're winning when you're winning, it's great. Um, you know, and you'll always remember them. Um, it's kind of like the the team stuff. Our race, you know, where I think you were on the the team trip to the Iron Islands that we did in 2010. Um, them sort of things like really pull a team together and pull a group together. And you still chat to them girls now, like as if you were still training and playing with them, you know. So they're probably my big ones. Um, the winning, you'll always remember them, obviously. But the then team, them team, team groups where where you bonded are probably the the best memories. Um, my mom would have been quite sick the year before last, and like even last year to get her back into the stand to see games you know that's that means an awful lot like you know so um kind of that it's it's family really enjoying what you're doing as much as you are you know that's that's what was kind of the the mainstay for me when I was playing very good and um just you know talking back looking back on earlier years playing and all that to me Camogie has come on so much since then um you know, the setup, the inter-county setup, the professionalism, all the commitment. Um, I just think, you know, from just from the outside looking in, and then going back to I suppose when I was involved, it's I just think there's light years, you know, between them. You know, the professionalism on it, the S and C, and would you see that too? Would you see big changes, or what do you think of the changes? I suppose in Camogie. Yeah, absolutely. Like, sure. Yeah. Yeah, like I said to you there, when, when I got called in, you got a letter in the post to ask you to come training, you know. Um, you know, it has come on absolutely massive. Um, I can remember five, six, seven years ago, if you had someone in to talk to you, you know, from a sports psychology point of view, then that was massive. Whereas now it's it's a it's a main thing and, and people have routines and they have goal setting and they have, you know, um, imagery and they have everything going on visualization everything you know so it's it's gone absolutely massive and I think you'd see that in the games as well that the physicality of the of the play and then the games and even like the the absolute athletes that you have now like if you're looking at Aoife Donoghue there in the in the final there a couple of weeks back like to be able to stay going at that pace and that strength for that long you know you wouldn't have seen that 10 10 or 15 years ago you know um but that's that's down to an awful lot of work that probably just goes on behind the scenes and the with GPA and all the the professionals that are getting involved now in the squads um, and it's all heading the right direction. Obviously, there's there's huge huge support out there for it now as well to get into the teams. And if you're not doing it, then then you're kind of the odd one out now at this stage, you know. Yeah, true. I suppose it's a huge commitment playing into County Camogie and. I was wondering, well, have you any plans, I suppose, how you would fill that fight now? You know, it's, you know, you would have been used to training, what, three, four, five times a week between club and county and then expected to do a bit in between or, you know, 
get do rehab recovery or sessions in between so like it obviously consumes so much of your time in county i've no doubt you'll stay playing with shan rovers uh for a long time yet and but still that you know there's going to be a huge void i suppose now that you're no longer are going to be involved with inter-county teams and have you any plans to 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 fill that void i suppose yeah no i don't have any major ones i suppose it's still fresh enough as at, at the minute like um i think when it comes to the january evenings now i'll be I'll be scratching my head going, what am I going to do Tuesday evening, you know? But um, yeah, no, I look, I don't have any major ones. I might take a holiday. <laughs> I haven't, uh, I wouldn't mind going on an old adventure holiday, um, doing a bit of hiking and biking or something like that for, for maybe a, a week or two. But um, haven't had a holiday now in a while. But um, yeah, no, I don't really have any major plans. I have, I have a red setter dog that will keep me well exercised now <laughs> right through the the that lay part of the winter but um it will be a massive void and uh sure it, you know it'll be I'll, I'll miss it of course for for a long time but um hopefully i'll be able to fill it with other things and and uh you know might take might take the family off somewhere to actually go to a social event rather than rather than going home early or something you know yeah brilliant um just finish up then um I suppose junior to very career uh, all those years you were playing, who would you rate as the best player that you ever played along alongside? She's sure I'd like to see you here now. I do. Yeah, remember what we <laughs> talked about. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, oh God, I don't know. Um, like there were so many. Like there were so many great players that you'd be playing with. Like and there, like you were saying, like who you played with ten years ago. The game is very different, but. Um, I'll always remember, like, when I first went in and I was only whatever age, I remember if Una Dwyer told you to run 10 laps backwards, you would have ran 10 laps backwards, Do you know. Um, like, she was she was a phenomenal player for me to come in as a young player. Like, she was the first over to, to say hello and that. Um, you know, and she was a real leader, but um, probably more recent years, I would have had great, great time playing alongside Julie Kerwin, you know, either, either fullback or cornerback with her. And... Um, she was just so passionate and stuff, you know, and and she always had common sense to talk about. There was never any waffle out of her. But um, yeah, them, them two kind of stick in my mind. And I suppose out of the recent years, then um, Kira Ryan is quite a similar player to Julie Kerwin in the sense that she only says something when there's something to be said, you know, and I kind of enjoyed that side of, of playing alongside her. Very good. A couple of serious names mentioned there. And then I yeah. suppose... You would have played against so many different counties. Who would have been the best player that you ever marked? Oh, Neve Mallon, hands down. down. She's like, yeah, like she, she, her, like she's very like caught actually in the way she plays. But just to just to keep tabs on her, and like she could be, she could be tied up with four or five defenders around her, and she'd still get a shot off. You know, she's she's incredibly hard. If she's the ball in her hand, she's incredibly hard to get block or to hook you know um I had I had a I had a great day above marking her in the semi-final a couple of years ago but um do you know I was flat out my feet after about 20 minutes but no she's probably the, the the toughest I've marked yeah brilliant well Sabrina it's been brilliant chatting to you um I suppose I was talking to a lot of people um you know, just before this podcast and, and, and everyone was singing your praises and I suppose the same words kept popping up like leader and passion and role model and determined. And I know um, Karma Bradshaw, the current senior selector, um, has huge praise for you. And, you know, I just wrote down a few things she said there. She described you as a true role model. You always had your teams back and always played a pivotal role on, on the team. A true leader, always uh, inclusive of the new and younger girls on the panel. And um, you know, you talked about Uno Dwyer there. Well, she mentioned you in the same same breath, I suppose. Of all, you know, when new people are on the panel, you and and especially Jenny Grace always, you know, help them feel welcome and bring them up along. Um, I know you're respected very highly by everyone. And um, you know, Carmen mentioned as well, and nothing was ever a bother to you. Carmen's involved, I suppose, in development side of things, Camogie and anytime you're asked to go to a summer camp or to bring a cup around it to was no bother and I suppose you always talked about Tiberi Camogie in the same passion that you displayed when you're playing Um, for me you were just always and still are a senior with Shannon Rovers last year even when you were 
I suppose, under pressure against Tara Sachs, who is just such a, a passionate, determined player, as well as obviously usually skillful, a great fielder of the ball, super strike, and just one of those players that, you know, you love playing and having them on the team with you, but you'd absolutely dread marking. Um, I'm sure everyone would say the same. I, I, I doubt if there's any player in the county uh, enjoys marking you. Um, so I suppose you always played, uh, gave it 100% for Tipperary Camogie and continue to do so for Shannon Rovers and just everyone in Tipperary Camogie uh, will be sorry to, to to see you retire from Intercounty county but um, we'll have fond memories of all your brilliant performances. And I think 2019, you know, being captain, um, you were a super leader that year and you well deserved your Soren Star Award. And um, I suppose enjoy retirement. And But I have a feeling... I just have a feeling we'll see you on, on the pitch again, you know, maybe as a selector or a management or I could see you doing that down the line. I don't know if you ever thought of that or. Uh, yeah, like I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't mind getting involved at some point. Um, maybe not straight away, but uh, yeah, it has crossed my mind. Like I, I enjoy coaching in the club. I'm not coaching this year now, but the last couple of years, um, myself and Aoife have been together coaching there in the club for, for underage and that so I enjoy that side of it um, maybe that's something that might fill the void now um, next year or that but maybe down the line you never know um, you never know what, what's what's in store but um, no thanks thanks for the nice words um, I suppose Carmel I get on great with Karen Bradshaw and um, she was very good to me the year of COVID and stuff personally as well so um, yeah, no, I just really appreciate all them people. It's like you were part of a management team at one point as well. And all them people teach you things, you know, about yourself and about where you're going and what you're doing. So um, you have to you have to appreciate all them people that are trying to help you out, you know. Brilliant. Well, thanks very much, Sabrina. And I'm sure we'll uh, hook up again maybe uh, during the year. And uh, as, as Sean Rovers progress in the Intermediate Championship, we we'll, we'll might uh, touch base again and have a chat. But uh, thanks for being my guest today on the Camogie Report podcast. Yeah, thanks a million, Ger. Thanks for having me. Okay, my next guest on today's uh, podcast is Philly Ryan, PRO. Philly, you're very welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Charlie. I suppose I have to start by congratulating you. Uh, last week, you predicted three winners in the Intermediates, and I have to say you were right in all three of them. I don't know, is that beginner's luck or... We'll see how you go with this week. We might get you to do a few more predictions, but a good start. Um, so just looking back on the junior championship at the weekend, FBD Insurance Junior Camogie Championship, uh, Money Gall had a good win over Brian Bruce, 5-7 to 3-9. Uh, at halftime, it was 1-6 each. And then uh, the second half, Money Gall uh, scored, uh, won a penalty, which Mary Teen scored. Then she followed this up with a free and then scored another three crucial goals in the second half. So... Massive scoring there by Maria T and um to give Money Call uh, a victory there, five seven to three nine. Um Philly, you were at the Boherlan and Balana match, uh, your own club Boherlan winning that two nineteen to three three. Was that a good game? Uh yeah, I suppose good result for Borlan. Uh uh Balana started with a sweeper system which caused Borlan a lot of trouble. Um they scored two early goals, led by two one to three points at one stage. Uh, but um, Max Friday was true on goal near the end of the first half and was dragged down and, and the referee gave a straight red uh, for the tackle. So um, it, 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 it um, put Balané on the back foot and uh, Borland up the scoring then and uh, ran out easy winners in the end. Uh, just the second Borland goal came at the final whistle. So the scoreline was a bit deceptive, especially with Balané down a player and, and, and the late goal for Borland. So uh, the match was actually very closely fought. Um, uh, so uh, that was the the overall opinion was the two teams were fairly evenly matched when they had 15 aside yeah okay and then Holy Cross had five goals um, uh, against Feather so they won that game 5-10 to 7 points but I believe uh, Feather was an injury depleted team Feather side so um, but still Holy Cross scored four unanswered first half goals I suppose to take control of that game um, people are probably wondering maybe where their senior players uh, were playing so Lorna Dwyer who's obviously on the Tipperary senior panel was at centre forward and Claire Stakelam uh, another Tipperary senior player was at centre back then the other junior A game Kildang and Templemore a very closely fought game uh, Templemore one point winners two goals and seven points to Kildang 12 points um, so Templemore got two first two goals in the first half which gave them a, a, a cushion they led two five to four at half time um, so Kildang good second half there with eight points 
to, compared to more three points, but I suppose that more had a lot of work done in the first half. Uh, so that's the results of the junior A. We'll just go down through the junior um, B results. Uh, firstly, the junior B league final was on and a massive win for McCarthy. Five goals and 20 points for to Gertner, who was 1-6. Billy, did you hear much about that game or I believe there was a huge crowd at it? Huge crowd at it. Nobody heard it. McCarthy was absorbed for the whole game and, and ran out um, uh, easy winners. Uh, Gertner, who I think had beaten McCarthy in the earlier rounds and uh, Quinn's Coincidentally enough, in the first round of the Junior B Championship, they're to play each other again next Sunday in 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 Gorton Hoo. So maybe home venue will be will be an advantage to Gorton Hoo this time. Okay, so McCarthy, they're definitely on the up. I know they were uh, in a good few county finals there in the last few weekends. And Junior B just results there. Uh, Laura had a good win over Carrick Swans, one nineteen to ten points. I see Del Coyne then scored one five from play, so great scoring from her for Laura. Ballingarry beat my Rovers 4-6 to 2-8. And then in the junior B2, Care and Cashel. Cashel won that game, three goals and nine points to four points. While Anna Carty bet Shannon Rovers a goal and 13 points to 4-1. And uh, Sabrina earlier on was talked about how good it was to have a second team in Shannon Rovers. So um, they're out again this weekend. Um, Freddie, we'll just, uh, it's just, Helter Skelter, I suppose, with all the matches with juvenile and adults and club and a lot of interest in all the games. Um, uh, if you want to talk about the under 14 a county final between McCarthy and Holy Cross, uh, a great result for McCarthy. Yeah, uh, McCarthy did an amazing feat there. They've won the under 16A and under 14A double this year and uh, had won the under 14A again last year. So the two in a row under 14A plus this year's double and, and they've added on a junior league as well. So Huge progress made been made in McCarkey. Um, the Holy Cross got up to a flying start and uh, they, they led, I think, two five to four points at one stage. But uh, two early second half goals by McCarkey brought them right back into it. And uh, they never looked back after getting the second goal, which put them a pint up. And they scored, was it, uh, five points after that. So they went, ran out 2 11 to 2 5 winners with McCarkey, uh, Holy Cross failing to score in the last 20 minutes of that game. So uh, uh, very much a match of two halves there. So disappointment for Holy Cross, but congratulations to McCarkey. Yeah, obviously great work being done in the club there and produced lots of great players, but it sounds like there's a lot of work being done as well by mentors and management and committee there behind the scenes. So um, that's great to see. Uh, also a massive weekend again for under 12 movie teams. Um, I know you had a busy day in Clonanty. Um, loads of semi-finals and finals taking place. Uh, and more this weekend again, I think. Yeah, I think uh, we had uh, 19, we had matches in Ballycattle on Saturday, but on Sunday, we had an amazing 16 matches uh, in Tenorti on both pitches, all the way from 10 a.m. to 5 a.m. And uh, uh, huge, work by huge work by development co committee there, uh, parking, gates, and uh, all the fixtures on time. And lucky enough, no draw, no drawing game. So uh, this weekend we have uh, 10 finals, uh, two in the rag, Shan Rovers and two, and Shan Rovers two against Street Balem, and uh, eight finals in Borlaan. Holy Cross two against Feather two, Borlaan one against Care one, uh, Nakavella two against Ballinair two, and a Carrick TV Newport. Uh, Belly Bacon two against Killeran two, Belly Bacon one against St. Pat's, Nina one against Killeran one, and Nina two against Gortnahu two. And this, so just think the 17 finals already played and 10 to go. So um, huge work being done by uh, getting those under fix 12 fixtures uh, played. Great. And it's great to see all the photos and the excitement of, of all the, the players and the parents and the supporters at all those county finals. Um, so let's keep an eye out on the Tipperary Camogie Development page, Facebook page for, for all the posters and all the photos and, uh, and results there. Um, I know that uh, there's an, is there an under 15 league starting up soon as well? Yeah, the, the groups and the the uh, groups are, uh, are drawn for the under 15. Uh, there's seven groups of four planned. The dates are not out yet because we need to talk to uh, Kieran and the fixtures committee about how to fit with minor fixtures and uh, referees, etc. So it's about to be sent out to the clubs, the under 15 club development league there in, in the next week, hopefully. Uh, so that's that's ready to go. Also, just to mention the under 13 academy, where we're on to clubs to send our best three players born in 2008 
in, in the next few weeks into um, development because uh, each winter we do uh, huge skill development on ball walls and in pitches. So, uh, which is in preparation for next year's under 14 uh, panels. So we're already thinking of next year's under 14 already. Brilliant. Uh, so loads of work being done at development age and um, or at development uh, in Tipperary Camogie. And um, so just looking ahead to this weekend, um, the, day, the weekends don't be long coming around again. And uh, the FBD Insurance Minor Championship, there's a good few fixtures in that. Um, I know there's an under 18 uh, A Championship game, Cashel and Nockerville. That's a that's that'll be a tasty clash. Uh, two I suppose sides that you know are doing really well underage competing at A and you know minor A and yeah. you know, intermediate and senior as well at adult level probably an overlap of players there as well is it? Yeah I suppose heartbreak for Nakavella that there was no minor A championship last year they would have been favourites they would have had Quiva uh, Quiva and Ema, Ema Hepburn in there uh, ready to go uh, McCarthy so uh, they would have been very strong so not as strong this year with a few of those overage so Cashel would be favourites to win that uh, of that Cashel minor team, I think there might be six or seven playing senior at the moment between the Fahey twins and uh, Grace Maloney and Ava Gase Malai, uh, Caitlin Downey and Alicia Mazzola. There's a huge number, Ella O'Dwyer, who's number their minors playing senior currently. So that Cashel minor team will be phenomenally strong. Yeah, sounds very strong. And then if you want, I don't know, do you want to run down through the un FPD Insurance Under 18C Championship games that are also on this weekend? Yeah, Money Gall play Kilowan on Saturday and Newport play Borges on Sunday. There are the other two fixtures um, uh, that we have listed here. Okay, so keep an eye out on all the social media platforms for um, times and dates and referees and for all those fixtures. Um, then mentioned earlier on, Senior Championship this weekend. Uh, Saturday, we have Drummond Inch at home to Tumi Vara, Anna Carty against Clonty, and then Silvermines and Duhara. Uh, in the Junior B Championship, um, Laura and Mile Rovers, we'll, we'll see how you, how your predictions go this week. Would you want to call a winner there, Laura and Mile Rovers? Well, if Mar my Laura managed to score 119, 19 points last week, and they're at home this week, so I'd just be tipping Laura to tip that one. And then Val and Gary are at home to Carrick Swans. Oh, a close one, and a derby match, two South teams, so... Uh, Hard to call that one. Maybe, maybe, maybe Swan, I'd say there, yeah. And I suppose, like you've mentioned already, poor coincidence, Gordon Hugh and McCarthy, they just played the summer uh, league final there last weekend. Out again now in the first round of the championship. Hard for Gordon Hugh, but at least they have home advantage. Can you see them uh, reversing the result? Uh, very difficult, unless uh, Gordon Hugh has players back from injury or the unavailability. It's hard to see him turning that amount of uh, scores McCarthy around. And then Portro and uh, St. Cronin's in the other game. So first round of championship for both these teams. That should be a good game, I'd say. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I haven't seen either of those teams playing this year, but um, uh, so I can just predict the draw there, purely, I think. <laughs> okay, so we'll, we'll look forward to seeing how all those games go and the Junior B Championship shaping up. And then the FBD Insurance Junior B2 Championship, uh, Shannon Rovers against Silvermines. Tumi Vara against Anacarty. They're both Sunday games at 4 p.m. And then um, in the group two, Colonti and Brian Bruce. Uh, that's a Sunday game as well. And Care and Holy Cross on Sunday as well. So loads of camogie. You'll see all those fixtures on the website, tipperarycamogie.com and on the social media. So another exciting weekend of camogie matches, Philly. And I um, suppose the FBD sponsorship um, and Tipperary Camogie, Club Camogie going from strength to strength this year. Yeah, everything's going well, and a uh, huge number of fixtures getting played every weekend, uh, which is fantastic. Great stuff. Uh, so that's all we have for this week's uh, Camogie Report podcast. I um, uh, hope you enjoyed the show. It was great to have Sabrina Larkin on and Philly again to update us on all the Camogie development news and fixtures. So uh, if you enjoyed this uh, episode, please give us a like and don't forget to su subscribe to Tipperary Camogie's YouTube channel.